All right, this is part two of our problem solving adventure. The last one we looked at the creative process and the Wallace model of creativity. Here are, we are looking at the problem solving process, specifically one problem solving model, Robert Sternberg's seven step problem solving model. This is one of many models, by the way, just so you don't think this is the model. Uh, Robert Sternberg, by the way, is one of the foremost researchers and writers in the area of intelligence. Problem solving starts first with the recognition. In order to solve a problem, you must first recognize that you have a problem. You see the incongruence or things that could be done better. Problem, uh, finding a problem or recognizing a problem is the important first step. Step two, you define the problem. Find exactly what the problem is. What are we looking for? Step three, effective problem solvers formulate a strategy. They develop a plan of expertise. Now, when studies have been done comparing novices with expert problem solvers in any way, whether it be art, science, chess, etc. Expert problem solvers spend more time up front planning. Naive or, uh, I don't want to say naive, not experts, okay we'll say naive, problem solvers or novices jump right in and start trying a bunch of things. The experts, and they studied actually artists who were given uh, a still life and asked to create a picture of it. Now, the experts spent a lot of time up front formulating and deciding exactly how they do it. The novices just jumped in there and tried a bunch of stuff. So, formulating a strategy. Step four, expert problem solvers. They represent the information. They gather all the necessary information. They display it so they can see the relationships. This involves using notes and diagrams, tables, charts, maps, flowcharts, etc. Step five, problem solving model process. Allocate resources up front. Resources include time, energy, attention, and materials. So you spend time up front redefining the problem to enhance problem solving, representing, and your ally Allocating resources instead of just trying a bunch of stuff. All right? uh, allocating resources also involves some brainstorming. We'll get to that in just a minute. Step number six, you monitor, you monitor it. This is a formative assessment. How's it working? Are we making progress? You are assessing along the way. You're checking the original criteria. And the last step is to evaluate at the end. You assess uh, how's it going. You collect data. Were we successful? You revise as necessary and you get feedback. Redefining the problem. We talked about that as part of problem definition. Sometimes an important part of defining the problem, this would be step two, is to redefine the problem. For example, how can we get tough on criminals and reduce crime? Well, let's one way of redefining it. What types of personal growth and empowerment programs, as well as education, employment, can we develop so people are less inclined to commit crime? All right. So this looks at the uh, effects. This looks at the cause. This is one example of redefining the problem. How can we get the school board to allocate resources in order to provide more services for less able students in our school? How can teachers differentiate classroom curriculum so that they meet the needs of highly creative and gifted learners? All right, less able, more, er, uh, more able. So this could be gifted as well as students with learning disabilities. So redefining the problem. How can I get the students in my seventh hour class to be quiet and behave? Instead, what can I do to create a social studies curriculum that is engaging and interesting so that they'll want to participate and be engaged? Redefining the problem. Bad test scores, how can I do better? Instead, how can I enhance my studying? Too heavy, how can I lose five pounds? What can I do to get myself to exercise? Or how must my diet change? All part of 
problem redefinition. Seven steps, awareness, defining or redefining the problem, formulating a strategy up front, doing a little planning, representing the information, get it on paper somehow so you can see how things uh, relate to each other, allocate resources, monitor as you are going through the process of solving the problem, and then at the end, evaluate. And there is a picture of Robert Sternberg. End part two.